First of all, I wish all Chinese Canadians a very happy, healthy and prosperous year of the Chinese Zodiac. The dragon offers hope for good luck and health over the next 12 months. I take this opportunity to recognize the important contributions that the Chinese Canadians have made and continue to make for the socio-economic development of Canada. Arriving about 160 years back, Chinese Canadians worked hard in the mines and building railroads. Today, with their knowledge and expertise, Chinese Canadians immensely contribute to our technology sector to keep Canada at the forefront of the knowledge-based economy. I also recognize that the Chinese heritage has enhanced the rich multicultural fabric of our wonderful country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Peterborough, Kawartha. This past weekend, I shared a heartbreaking Facebook post. I reached out to Dave and Susan Gerrard and asked them if I could share it here in the House of Commons, and they replied, yes, please. Here is some of the post, as I don't have time to read it all. After a long battle with addiction, our 28-year-old son, Ryan David Gerard, died of a drug overdose on February 8, 2024. Beloved son of David and Susan, dear brother of Mitchell, cherished grandson of Teddy, Ted and Betty Maker, and David, deceased, and Dolores Gerard. Our family would like to speak the truth about his death. Silence would mean Ryan's death was in vain, but if one person's life is saved by his story, I would tell it over and over. Fentanyl and opioids are terribly addictive substances, and unfortunately, addiction is a disease that has no cure. Ryan loved animals, water sports, hockey, and soccer. And when he was young, he was above average academically and athletically, but drugs stole his soul. Mr. Speaker, we must fight against these drugs that are killing 22 Canadians a day. It is our job to do better. <laughs> The Honourable Member from Scarborough Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, February is Black History Month, and I would like to say thank you to all the members of black communities that are making a difference every day in my home of Scarborough Centre. Over the past several years, I have had the opportunity to visit and work with the Sea Centre for young black professionals. They are doing such important and impactful work focused on youth workforce development, education, and advocacy. Another group making a difference is Ogotawa, which helps gifted, underrepresented, underserved, and underemployed artists of African descent male a living from their art. I would also like to recognize the Heritage Skills Development Center and its executive director, Charity Lebanel, who do a lot of important work to recognize and celebrate the many cultures and communities that call Scarborough home. Let us celebrate black excellence this month and every day of the year. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Uh, the Honorable Member for Rivière du Nord. Mr. Speaker, a Jerome institution has passed away. Robert Bob Vernet will have left his mark, both figuratively and literally, on generations of local sportsmen and women. He was a scorer, a timekeeper, and an unconditional fan of everyone who played in front of him. And he refused to show preferences. For him, everyone was a champion. For over half a century, in field hockey and baseball, Bob Vernet was the man who dedicated him himself and always went the extra mile. He crossed generations, and it wasn't uncommon to see him scoring for players whose parents, even grandparents, games he had marked. Honored many times, in 2012, he received the Prix Henri Descarnel uh, for the Lawrence Athletes Association and in recognition of his remarkable involvement in various sports associations. He'll be appreciated uh, by all. Uh, he leaves a great void behind him. Mr. Vermette, you will not be forgotten. The Honourable Member for Vimy. Today, as I rise in this chamber, I am filled with profound gratitude and joy as I pay tribute to my beloved spouse, Jerry, on his 70th birthday. 70 years of life, love, and resilience. Behind every committed elected official stands a pillar of unwavering support. And for me, that pillar has been Jerry. Through the highs and lows of public life, his steadfast love and encouragement have been my guiding light. As we celebrate this milestone, I am reminded of the sacrifices our families make, the late nights endured, and the moments missed. On this special day, I extend my deepest gratitude for his unwavering support, 
love and sacrifice. May this milestone birthday be a celebration of life well lived, filled with joy, love, and countless cherished memories. Happy 70th birthday, Jerry. You are the rock of our family, and we are so lucky to have you. The Honourable Member from Desnete, Miss Nippy, Churchill River. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, today I want to recognize and thank those who support me in the work I do re representing the good people of Desnete, Miss Nippy, Churchill River. First, the many volunteers who consistently give generously of their time. Although too many to name, they know who they are. Second, my team members, both at home and here in Ottawa, that do the hard work behind the scenes every day. For me, that is Dion, Hunter, Lene, Emily, and Cindy. And most importantly, though, Speaker, my family, both my immediate and extended family, who are always there for me. Mr. Speaker, it is always great to have the opportunity to show visitors around this place and to see the awe on their faces as they walk around. These last few days, my wife Lori and I have enjoyed having our family here, most of them for the very first time. It has been great to have Kent and Rebecca, Alex and Sam, Nicole Washington and their boys Nathaniel and Eli here with us. Unfortunately, my son Mac and Hannah were not able to come. Speaker, I ask all members to join me today in thanking those who support us in the important work we do in this place. The Honourable Member from Charlottetown. Mr. Speaker, with federal funding and federal leadership, we are changing how cities approve housing projects with a greater focus on higher density housing, student housing, homes near transit and affordable housing. We are going to get more homes built for Canadians at prices they can afford. Last week, I was proud to represent the Government of Canada at an important announcement in the great city of Charlottetown. Through the Housing Accelerator Fund, the Government of Canada and the City announced that they had reached an agreement to fast-track 300 housing units over the next three years. This work will help spur the construction of more than 1,000 homes over the next decade. I have every confidence that these numbers will be surpassed based on the uptake of developers to the suite of federal programs available, including the GST rebate on rental properties. My community is ready, willing and able to do its part to address the housing crisis. With this agreement, our government is unlocking new opportunities for growth in Charlottetown. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Hamilton Mountain. <laughs> Speaker, in June 2020, a movement was born in Hamilton, Ontario, in response to the murder of George Floyd. Sisters Ashley, Abigail, and Alexandria Montague, born and raised in my riding of Hamilton Mountain, felt compelled to take tangible action to support and uplift their community. They leveraged their considerable talents to unite and promote black businesses in Hamilton through a platform they call Black Owned, was started as a seed of an idea on Instagram has blossomed into a full-fledged organization to support Black-owned businesses now across Ontario with training and networking and partnerships with organizations and schools. Our government is also supporting Black-owned through targeted programs for Black youth, helping the Montague sisters expand and connect even more Black-owned businesses. They are the embodiment of excellence we celebrate during Black History Month, and I encourage everyone to visit blkowned.ca another Hamilton success story. Here, here, here. Happy Black History Month. The Honourable Member from Dufferin Caledon. The Prime Minister's Arrive Scam app isn't worth the cost, and it's absolutely not worth the corruption. First, the Arrive Scam app was supposed to cost $80,000, but it ended up costing at least $60 million. We say at least because no one knows for sure because of the complex web of corruption engaged in. But wait, it gets worse. $12 million went to well-connected Liberal insiders that did no work. And speaking of no work. It actually didn't work. In one month alone, 10,000 people were sent to quarantine that didn't have to be quarantined. And today, the parliamentary budget officer says there was a glaring disregard of basic management. They can't even manage their corruption properly. What we know for sure is this. The Arrive Scam app is not worth the cost, and it's not worth this Prime Minister's corruption. The Honourable Member from Halifax West. February 19 is Heritage Day in Nova Scotia, a day I'm proud to have played a role in creating in law in 2013. 
This year, we honor Petty Officer William Hall, the first black person, first Nova Scotian, and third Canadian to receive the Victoria Cross for Valor and Bravery. His heroic actions as a crew member of the HMS Shannon are well documented, and I'm looking forward to attending the commissioning ceremony for the new HMCS William Hall, named in his honor this spring. To mark Heritage Day, I'm distributing family activity packs, joining Friends of Clayton Park's event at the Canada Games Centre, supporting two free community skates at St. Margaret Centre in Upper Ten Talon, and at the BMO Centre at Gary Martin Drive. Profitez-vous bien avec vos... Take advantage of the time with your loved ones, and I wish you a happy Nova Scotia Heritage Day. The Honourable Member from Northumberland, Peterborough South. Well, a rise scam has officially arrived. It's the next big Liberal scandal. In a damning report, the Auditor General stated that this Prime Minister's Arrive Cam A app wasted millions of dollars because of corruption and incompetency. Here are a few highlights from the report. The government had a massive multi-million dollar contract based on a missing and potentially fictional proposal. The app cost at least $60 million, or at least we think so. It could be way more. They don't know. What, uh, what we do know is that they lost track of $12 million. Wow. If that doesn't paint the picture for you, imagine a contract being signed while shady, while shady contractors and lobbyists are, are lobbying uh, uh, government officials. It's incredible. These liberals have a complete disrespect for taxpayers and taxpayer dollars. This app should have cost 80 grand instead of cost 60 million. These liberals are not worth the cost and they are definitely not worth the corruption. The Honourable Member from Calgary, Forest Lawn. After eight years, this Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost or corruption of his Arrive Scam app that we didn't need and didn't work. The Auditor General found this app was the worst NDP Liberal mismanagement she has ever seen. An $80,000 app turned into a $60 million scandal at least. It's impossible to determine the actual cost thanks to this Prime Minister's complex corruption. At least $12 million went to Liberal insiders that did no work. This Prime Minister continues to demonstrate him and his Arrive Scam app are not worth the cost or corruption. The SNC-Lavalin scandal saw strong women getting kicked out of the caucus for standing up to his corruption. The WE scandal saw a, another minister take the fall for this Prime Minister's family getting paid off. As the RCMP continues their criminal investigation, another cabinet minister could get thrown under the bus to cover up this Prime Minister's crime, chaos and corruption. After eight years, Canadians cannot afford any more of this costly, corrupt Prime Minister. The Honourable Member from Labrador. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to outline my support for Bill C-49, amendments to the Atlantic Accord, which has many opportunities for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians and Nova Scotians. The government of Newfoundland and Labrador has led offshore oil and gas in this country for decades. Now they are looking to lead offshore wind energy in North America. We might be a small province, Mr. Speaker, but we are an innovative province, one that is ready to move forward with good environmentally sustainable energy projects. This is the opportunity of a generation to lead in offshore energy in Canada, creating nearly 30,000 skilled trade jobs and a stable economy at home. I am disappointed that the Conservatives are against this bill. The last time Conservatives tried to axe the Atlantic Accord, royalties, benefits and jobs for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians was under Stephen Harper in 2006. It is quite obvious, Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives don't support Atlantic Canada. The Honourable Member from Timmins, James Bay. Mr. Speaker, the city of Timmins has lost a political icon. Mayor Victor M. Power has gone to the Angels. Nobody lived, loved Timmins more than Vic. He started out as a high school guidance counselor, and Vic brought those skills and concern for people in public life. And the thing about Vic was that he knew everybody. He knew your family history and the name of every cousin and nephew. Now, of course, Vic couldn't have done it without his loving wife, Clarice. They were the ultimate power couple. She knocked on every door during the election. She was the hostess who made you feel welcome, and Clarice brought class, culture, and pride to our northern city. Vic first ran for council in 1966. 
He gave the city four decades of public service and oversaw the transition from a roughneck mining town to a regional center of business, health, and education. He set a standard that politicians at every level should want to emulate. On behalf of Canada's Parliament, we mourn the loss of Vic and thank him and Clarice for their dedication to the North and the people of Timmins. The Honourable... The Honourable Member for saint hyacinthe bagot Mr. Speaker, today I'm delighted to welcome to the Hill guests who are particularly important to my riding. I'm talking about the young members of the 953rd Aviation Squadron from saint hyacinthe bagot Their involvement and constant presence in my community is solid, founded in March 1995 by Mr. Robert Ledoux. Seventy cadets already answered the call, and the president at the time, Mr. Serge Wall, left us too soon but he still took a part in the squadron's first flight. His legacy will live on forever in the shared memories of its members. The 953rd Squadron stands out in many ways, whether it's in sports, shooting, or summer camps. Excellence is not an option. It's constantly assured. Its members are also extremely involved in their community. I'm honoured honored to be able to count on such a dynamic squadron in my region, and I wish these members a most re rewarding visit to Parliament Hill. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Death, taxes and Liberal corruption, three things that are certain in Canada after eight years of this Prime Minister. The Prime Minister wasted $60 million on an app that was supposed to cost $80,000 that didn't work, that didn't keep anyone safe and that erroneously forced 10,000 people into quarantine. It costs 750 times more than they said it would. The corruption runs deep beyond just the wasteful, self-righteous, big brother policies of this Prime Minister. Here's what the auditors had to say. A glaring disregard for basic management, insiders setting the terms, $12 million on well-connected consultants that did no work on this app. At a time where Canadians are struggling because of this Prime Minister's costly incompetence, a rive scam should have been dead on arrival. With this Prime Minister's app, there is no one left to blame. He should look in the mirror or face Canadians who know he is not worth the cost and he is not worth the corruption. The Honourable Member from Cape Breton, Canso. Mr. Speaker, I rise in the House today as my riding of Cape Breton, Canso recovers from one of the heaviest snowfalls in recorded history. I remain very concerned for those in my riding who still require assistance, in particular our seniors and other populations in need. But let me be clear, the snowfall is an ongoing challenge for Cape Breton and northeastern Nova Scotia, and our government is acting on it. We provided boots on the ground to dig out homes, helicopters to transport evacuees and supplies, and heavy equipment to clear the snow from our communities. Now, we continue to support the province and municipalities as they lead recovery operations. I also wish to thank the many people, Mr. Speaker, who volunteered their time toward helping their communities. From sports teams to heavy equipment operators to Team Rubicon and our own Canadian Coast Guard cadets, we thank you for everything you've done. In times of crisis, Mr. Speaker, our people are truly stronger together. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oral questions, questions on The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Prime Minister could have followed our common sense plan to fix the budget, stop crime, and so on, but instead he decided to waste. $60 million when Canadians can't afford food or rent. And this was a scandal, the Arrive Can app that we didn't even need, which falsely sent 10,000 people into quarantine and enriched liberal cronies. Isn't it true that that, that that app was not worth the cost, just like the Liberal government is not worth the cost? The Honourable Prime Minister. The Honourable Minister, rather. Mr. Speaker, we've read the Auditor General's report. We've accepted her recommendations. The only thing I agree with my colleague opposite on is that anyone responsible for managing taxpayer money must 
follow strict rules. The rules in this case were not followed. We accept the recommendations to make sure this never happens again. And Mr. Speaker, we will always remain responsible when it comes to taxpayer money. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. So he's going to punish those responsible for this scandal? It should start with the Prime Minister himself. He should have had the courage to stand and defend himself rather than hiding behind another. This was an app we didn't need. It forced 10,000 people f into quarantine when they shouldn't have. It enriched contractors who did nothing. They did no work and simply offered members of the Liberal government whiskey. That's simply not worth the cost. Before we hear the answer, I just ask everyone to please remain a bit more quiet so that the speaker can hear the questions and the answers. The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I, we thank the Auditor General who we, uh, and we uh, are in favor of her recommendations around Arrive Can. Many of these recommendations have already been implemented. Others will be shortly, including new measures to guarantee that uh, deliverables are clearly identified in procurement contracts. We will continue to ensure that contracts awarded by our government are done so in a responsible, open way. The crisis of doubling housing costs and 22 million people forced to food banks, the Prime Minister could have followed our common sense plan to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget and stop the crime. Instead, he blew fifth, sorry, over $60 million on an Arrive scam app that we didn't need, didn't work, sent 10,000 people erroneously into quarantine, losing income, all the while the thing costed 750 times more than the Prime Minister promised. Won't he stand up today and admit that the app is just like him? It's not worth the cost, it's not worth the corruption. Here, here. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition knows very well that the moment there were allegations around cost overruns or inappropriate contracting practices, the Canadian Border Services Agency immediately began an internal audit and made the appropriate referrals to the appropriate authorities. We take the obligation to manage taxpayers' money very seriously. Under no circumstances would we condone what the Auditor General determined to be contracting practices that did not follow the rules, and anybody who didn't will be held to account. Absolutely. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, he wants to hold someone to account for the Arrive scam. Why not hold the one person who had the authority to create the uh, Arrive scam and who had the authority to stop the Arrive scam? And that's the Prime Minister of Canada. <laughs> he is the government. This was a government program we warned wasn't needed, wouldn't work, and now we know it went 750 times over budget. 75% of the contractors did no work at all, but they did buy whiskey and other treats for the top Liberal government officials. Again, won't the Prime Minister admit the app is just like him? Not worth the cost, not worth the corruption. The Honourable Minister for Public Services. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As my colleague from Public Safety said earlier, we would like to thank the Auditor General and welcome her recommendations on the Arrive Can application. Some of that report recommendations have already been implemented, some will soon be implemented, including the introduction of new measures to ensure that tasks and deliverables are clearly defined in future professional services contracts. We are continuing, committed to continuing to ensure that contracts are delivered in a fair, efficient and transparent manner. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. And again, the Prime Minister is hiding under a rock, refusing to stand up and explain himself after he blew $60 million on this Arrive scam while Canadians cannot afford to eat, heat or house themselves. This scam involved taking money that could be used for border security, like scanning the 99% of shipping containers that go without any inspection from our ports with stolen cars, not to mention other things that Canadians could have done with that money. Instead, it stuffed the pockets of 75% of the contractors who did no work. Again, 
Will the Prime Minister admit that the Arrive scam is not worth the cost and not worth the corruption? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, I'm surprised uh, that the Leader of the Opposition would mention investing in border security when his government cut 1,000 yes. officers did. that did the exact Absolutely. kind of work chuck, that chuck, he's chuck. now pretending he wants to invest in, when they eliminated 50 per cent of the intelligence capacity yep. in the Border Services chuck, Agency chuck, chuck. to work with local, provincial police and the RCMP. So, Mr. Speaker, we have no lessons to take in Zero. investing in border security. Zero from somebody who gutted the Border Services exactly. Agency. The Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. For La Prairie, rather. Sorry. It wasn't perfect when Quebec introduced medical aid in dying, but some people were suffering, so we focused on the elements where there was a consensus. We wanted to move things forward. That was the humane approach, and that's the approach that's lacking today in Ottawa. There's a consensus, both in Quebec and in Canada. People suffering from things like Alzheimer's should be able to make advanced requests. Why not move forward on the basis of that consensus instead of kicking the can down the road until 2027, at least? Do patients deserve to be abandoned until 2027? The Honourable Minister, Mr. Speaker, MAID is a profoundly personal and complex situation. I respect the work that Quebec has done in the advance request area. We have Canadians deserve clear standards about what is criminal and what isn't. People should. There, there's an exception for Quebec on this issue, and we will be working with Quebec in the run-up to the next steps. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. By accepting this motion to postpone made until 2027, these three parties are abandoning patients. They refuse to respect the consensus in Canada. But what about the consensus in Quebec? Quebec is ready. Quebec wants to allow advance requests. The National Assembly is unanimous on this. They want advance requests. And Conservative uh, in Quebec agree, but these Conservatives here don't care because, for them, Quebec isn't important. When will the government listen to Quebec and authorize advance requests? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Since the very beginning, Mr. Speaker, when we dealt with MAID, we took a cautious approach. We tried to balance individual autonomy with protections for vulnerable peoples. We've taken a prudent approach, and we want to treat these issues in a thoughtful way uh, after consulting Quebecers and Canadians, and that's what we will continue to do. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Decisions. The Auditor General found that the Liberal government wasted almost $60 million on the Arrive Can app that no one uses and doesn't even work. All at a time when Canadians are struggling to put food on the table and pay their rent or mortgage. Why are the Liberals so up? Colleagues, colleagues, I'm going to ask if, uh, as I'd asked at the beginning of, of question period, if you could please keep your comments to the time that you have questions so I could hear the Honourable Member ask a question and also to hear the Honourable Member answer a question. The Honourable Member from Burnaby South from the top, please. I think the Conservatives were upset that I forgot to mention their, their scandals with the Phoenix Pay System and Deloitte. They also have their own scandals to worry about. I should have mentioned that as well. But let's talk about the garbage decisions of this Liberal government. The, the Auditor General found that the Liberals wasted $60 million on an app, the Arrive Can app, that no one uses and doesn't work. All at a time when Canadians are struggling with their groceries and their rent. Why are the Liberals so obsessed with making rich consultants richer and so out of touch with where Canadians are at? The Honourable Minister for Public Services. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And as we said earlier, we are grateful to the Auditor General for her report, which was important and timely. We have accepted all her recommendations. Some of them have already been implemented over the last few weeks. Some are being implemented. 
we look forward to more opportunities to work with her so that we make our procurement system as transparent, equitable, and fair as Canadians expect it to be. L'Honorable Deputy de Burnaby Sud. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. The Auditor General found that the Liberals had wasted at least $60 million for work that the public service could have done. People are unable to afford food, and these Liberals, who are out of touch with reality, are throwing Canadians' money out the window. Why are the Liberals so obsessed with making private consultants rich? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, we obviously thank the NDP leader for his question. We share his concerns about the need to manage taxpayer money appropriately and what the Auditor General identified were circumstances that were not at all appropriate, and that is why people at CBSA and PSPC have taken steps, the necessary steps, to ensure that this type of situation never recurs. We will always remain focused on managing Canadians' money well. A member from Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. The Prime Minister's arrive scam was supposed to cost taxpayers $80,000, but it was confirmed by the Auditor General that it in fact cost more than $60 million. And after eight years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, we know that he's not worth the cost and he's definitely not worth the corruption. And this process was so corrupt that his favourite company of two guys in a basement, GC Strategies, got to write the contract for themselves to the exclusion of everybody. Else. And we know they did no IT work, that's been confirmed, but they got paid $20 million for their trouble. So will this Prime Minister just admit that he's lining the pockets of insiders at the expense of Canadians? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, just because our colleague repeats a series of allegations that are not borne out by the facts does not make them true. Absolutely. The facts are, Mr. Speaker, the very moment, the very moment that there were allegations of inappropriate contracting practices, an internal audit was begun by the President of the Border Services Agency, and referrals were made to the appropriate authorities, including the RCMP. Anybody who did not follow the contracting rules, Mr. Speaker, will be held to account. My friend knows that, and he shouldn't ascribe a series of responsibility where it doesn't exist. Here, here. The Honourable Member from Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Well, Canadians want us and expect us to ascribe responsibility to the individual responsible, and that's this Prime Minister. Okay. This app was supposed to cost $80,000. It cost more than $60 million. They've been under RCMP investigation, investigation by the Procurement Ombudsman, by the Auditor General, and the results so far are damning for this government, right. that they've lined the pockets of insiders while Canadians are lined up at food banks. It's absolutely absolutely unacceptable that the cost overruns have seen $20 million go to a company that did absolutely no work on the app. Why are they getting putting their friends ahead while Canadians suffer? The Honourable Minister for Public Works. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As my colleague responsible for public safety just said, this uh, misinformation and disinformation is completely unacceptable. What was known was that the border had to be closed and that uh, billions of dollars worth of international trade were at stake. What we heard from the Auditor General this morning was that the situation was unacceptable, so we need to work hard on making sure that th things are done properly in the public service of Canada. Four. The Prime Minister's Arrive Scan app is not worth the cost or the corruption to Canadians. Today, the Auditor General informed us that Arrive Scan, an app that was supposed to cost $80,000, will now cost Canadians a minimum of $60 million. It gets worse. Due to documentation that the AG says was deleted or destroyed, it could be more than $60 million. Wow. She doesn't know who worked on a rise scam, if the work was fulfilled to requirements, or if it was even completed at all. So why did the Prime Minister rig the process so that insiders get rich and taxpayers foot the bill? Yeah. The Honourable Member for Public Security. Again, Mr. Speaker, repeating the last part of my Honourable friend, Friend's question does not make it true. Nope. What is true, Mr. Speaker, is that at the moment 
contracting practice irregularities were identified, the Border Services Agency took all of the steps appropriate to determine exactly what were the facts and to hold those responsible to account in the case that that's necessary. Mr. Speaker, the Auditor General identified a series of contracting practices that were not fo followed. The government does not condone that behaviour and has taken all the steps to make sure that those circumstances don't repeat themselves. The Honourable Member from Calgary, Midnapur. Every word I say is true and that member knows it. The Prime Minister's arrived scan app is not worth the cost or corruption. Contractors were paid over $1,000 a day, even though 18% of the invoices for these contracts had no supporting documentation. So we don't even know if the contractors completed the work. GC Strategies pocketed almost $20 million and yet completed no work themselves. It gets worse. They wrote the requirements for the $25 million contract that they won. Simple question for the Prime Minister. How is he going to get our money back? Yeah. The Honourable Member, the Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, once again, the Auditor General identified some contracting practices that were clearly not followed. Mr. Speaker, under no circumstance is that an acceptable circumstance. Governments have responsibility to manage taxpayers' funds in the most effective way possible. That's why we have accepted all of the Auditor General's recommendations. And the good news, Mr. Speaker, is the Border Services Agency and the Procurement Department had already begun to act yep, and put in absolutely. place a number of oversight measures before the Auditor General's report, and we look forward to fully implementing everything that she suggested. The Honourable Member for Megan Ticlihable. The Prime Minister's Arrive Can app is not worth the money. It's not worth the unjustified cost. It's not worth the lack of expense justification. It's not worth the blatant lack of accounting practices. And it's also not worth the 10,000 people who were qu quarantined without justification. According to the Auditor General, the Prime Minister's Arrive Can app is not worth the minimum $60 million paid by Canadians. It's not worth the corruption. Does the Prime Minister realize that? Yes. The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In times of crisis, the Government of Canada has two responsibilities. One is to provide for people's safety and security, and the second is to follow their internal processes. And there were tens of thousands of Canadians who died in the pandemic, there was billions of dollars worth of international trade at risk, and the borders had to be closed. And so the Auditor General has made some findings about unacceptable mismanagement by people at CBSA. The Honourable Member for Megan uh, Almost all Liberals voted against this investigation by the Auditor General. The app was supposed to cost 80 grand it cost and ended up costing at least 60 million the prime minister's app is not worth the cost the 750% cost overrun gc strategies a two person company that did no it work got 20 million dollars and the cbsa was unable to tell the auditor general who chose to hire and pay gc strategies does the prime minister realize that it's not worth the cost or the corruption, the Honourable Minister of Public, Service, uh, Public uh, Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. During the COVID crisis in 2020, there was a uh, billion dollars worth of trade at stake. There were people dying every day in hospitals and long-term care. The government had to act quickly. In spite of that, the lack of uh, sh information sharing and and uh, financial practices by CBSA was unacceptable, as the Auditor General reported this morning. The Honourable Member for beauport Limoilou. The Auditor General's report on the Arrive Can app is catastrophic. It cost $60 million, almost $20 million of which was pocketed by GC Strategies, and they did absolutely no work. The government turned a blind eye to this, and contractors clearly profited from this with the help of government officials. This $60 million scandal was initially estimated to be a 
a contract worth only $80,000. How is it possible to have a cost overrun of 700, 750% without any minister getting involved? The Honourable Minister, 150,000 travellers per day cross the border, and CBSA had to deal with this. There was also uh, food and medications that needed to cross the border. So we needed an app quickly to allow these people and goods to flow. And in spite of all that, CBSA failed to take appropriate steps to manage uh, all of this. The Honourable Member for beauport Limoilou. The Auditor General showed that the call for tenders for ArriveCan was not competitive. But she couldn't say who at CBSA decided to choose GC strategies. So there was no way of knowing who was responsible. And while a company of just two people pocketed $20 million for doing nothing, why hasn't this individual been identified and held to account? It, when it comes to ArriveCan, accountability will arrive when? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, in our view, accountability is extremely important, and that is precisely why, as soon as we were informed of these allegations of irregular contracting practices, we took the necessary steps. We did an internal audit, which is still on, on, uh, underway. We took corrective steps where necessary. And we read the Auditor General's report immediately today, and we will follow through on everything she's suggested. The Honourable Member for beauport Limoilou. Arrive can cost $60 million, but that's not even clear. According to the Auditor General, the true cost is impossible to calculate because of CBSA's poor financial record-keeping. But she does know that 18 percent of the providers gave no details with their invoices. So we don't know who did what. She also knows that four out of five resources for evaluation, evaluating security couldn't prove that real work had been done. How is it possible that no one in the government sounded the alarm before this became public knowledge? The Honourable Minister of Public uh, Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I, I think it's, this demonstrates how important it is for the public service to do their work properly, even in moments of crisis like we went through with COVID-19. It's true that uh, there was a danger that m billions of dollars were being lost on a weekly basis in economic activity. People lost their jobs and their lives because of COVID. But uh, that, is why, that is what led to the information from the Auditor General this morning. Saskatchewan. The two insiders at GC Strategies worked with the NDP Liberal government to set the requirements of arrive scam contracts, which GC Strategies then got. In other words, the process was rigged. The government massively overpaid for this $60 million glitchy app because the process was rigged. It was rigged so that GC Strategies got $20 million from taxpayers and did no actual work. After eight years, it's clear that this Prime Minister's Arrive Scam app is not worth the cost or the corruption. Why did the Prime Minister rig the process to pay insiders and punish taxpayers? Here, here. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, again, my colleague can repeat a series of things that the facts don't bear out. What we can say, Mr. Speaker, is that the government takes extremely seriously the obligation of public servants to follow the contracting rules. That's exactly what the president of the Canadian Border Services Agency has assured me that she's doing. And she's also assured me that she's taken a series of corrective measures before today's Auditor General report and will continue to do whatever is required to ensure that taxpayers' money is always handled in the appropriate way. Here, here. 
The Honourable Member from Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. Mr. Speaker, everything I said is directly in the Auditor General's report. So the Minister can't claim he's listening to that report and yet deny what I said. Well connected insiders average $1,100 per day for working on this contract. Wow. After eight years, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost, the crime, or the corruption. The Prime Minister's arrive scam process was clearly rigged, and now Canadians are out tens of millions of dollars when they can least afford it. Why did the Prime Minister rig the process to pay insiders and punish taxpayers? Yeah. 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 The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Again, Mr. Speaker, uh, when the Border Services Agency was made aware of allegations around inappropriate contracting practices, the appropriate authorities were called in. An internal audit was uh, ordered, an audit, by the way, which is still in progress. And, Mr. Speaker, if people did something that was not appropriate or met a criminal standard, they will obviously be held to account. The government has been very clear. All of these processes to respect taxpayers' money are essential, and that's exactly what we're going to put into place. The Honourable Member for Miramichi Grand Lake. After eight years, this NDP Liberal government is not worth the cost or the corruption. The Prime Minister's Arrive Scam app is not worth the cost or the corruption. Today, the Auditor General revealed that well-connected insiders and consultants were making $1,100 per day, almost twice the inflated government rate. The Auditor also found it disturbing that an app that should have cost $80,000 cost $60 million that we know of. Why did the Prime Minister rig the process to pay insiders and punish taxpayers? Yeah. The Honourable Member, Honourable Minister for Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Again, we thank the Auditor General for her important report, which not only we took, uh, we took great gratitude to see this morning, but we have followed many of the recommendations that we find in that report, including improving evaluation requirements and work experience data, increasing record keeping on subcontracting work, and suspending authorities temporarily for task authorizations until we are confident that better procedures are not only put into place, but also better monitored. The Honourable Member from Edmonton Strathcona. Mr. Speaker, unbelievably, the Liberal government has authorized $28.5 million of new military exports to Israel since October. Today, a Dutch court ruled the Netherlands must stop spending F-35 Spain and Belgium have suspended arms sales, but Canada continues to send arms, doing nothing to ensure that they are not being used against civilians. So many children are being killed as Netanyahu bombs Rafah, the place where Palestinians were told they'd be safe. How can the minister continue to sell arms to Israel? The Honourable Minister for Global Affairs. It's important what, to, to make sure that we understand what we're talking about here. This, there's a wide range of items that require an export permit. When we look at the permits to Israel in particular, let me be clear. I have not received and therefore have not approved any export permits of weapons to Israel since October 7. And any permits issued since October 7 were essentially non-lethal permits. Canada has a very robust export control system. We abide by the UN Arms Trade Treaty, and we take this responsibility very seriously. Thank you. 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 The Honourable Member for New Westminster Burnaby. Harmful content are costing children their lives. In December, a 12-year-old boy in BC died by suicide after experiencing online sextortion. Sadly, this is becoming more and more common, and this government has done nothing. Liberals promised to protect our kids from online harm within 100 days of the last election. While they do nothing, kids' lives are at risk. When will the Liberals start protecting children by acting on online harms? Here, here. The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General for Canada. Mr. Speaker, the targeting of children in this country is extremely troubling, it is depraved, and frankly, I find it disgusting as a parent. What the member opposite is highlighting is a problem that absolutely requires a remedy. 
What we are proposing is comprehensive legislation that will do everything necessary to keep Canadian children safe. Safe from, safe from those who would prey upon them in online spaces, safe from those who would keep them away from their parents and the protection that they need. That is the type of protection we will legislate and we will do it forthwith. The Honourable Member from Calgary Skyview. Mr. Speaker, the war in Gaza has been devastating for so many innocent Palestinians. Gaza is one of the worst places in the world to be. While we were the first Western government to actively provide life-saving aid, the silence from the party opposite has been deafening. Can the Minister of International Development please tell us how important it is that we all come together and support efforts to get aid to those desperate civilians who have been devastated by this war? The Honourable Minister for International Development. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the war in Gaza has been devastating to so many innocent civilian, uh, Palestinian civilians. That is why our government has provided more than $100 million in humanitarian aid, making us one of the top donors in the world. I was recently disappointed to hear uh, comments made by the Conservative candidate for York Centre saying that any and all aid to Palestinian civilians will somehow fund terrorism, even through the Red Cross. So while the Conservatives are indifferent to Palestinian civilian suffering, we will remain steadfast in supporting humanitarian support to Palestinian civilians. That is nonsense, and you know it. The Honourable Member from Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, please understand, is an experienced member and understands that the people who have the floor should be talking. The Honourable Member from Brantford Brent. Mr. Speaker, two words for this government, jaw-dropping. Today the Auditor General revealed that the Prime Minister paid almost $20 million to GC Strategies for his Arrive scam. This two-person consulting company working out of their basement performed no actual IT work on the app. This amount is double what the government previously reported. Will the Prime Minister admit that he rigged the system to pay well-connected Liberal insiders while fleecing taxpayers? Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. The Honourable Minister for Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In a time of crisis, a responsible government has two responsibilities. First, to protect the health and safety yes. of its citizens. Yes, exactly. Second, to ensure the efficiency of its internal system. What we know from COVID-19 is that a daily cost of $1 billion in economic cost to Canadians occurred every day. What we also know is that hundreds of thousands of, no, hundreds of people were dying every week. But at the same time, this is no excuse for the time of the type of recommendation and finding that the Auditor General deposited today. And that's why we are going to continue to implement. The Honourable Member from Brantford Grant. Mr. Speaker, as outlined by the Auditor General, the pandemic urgency can never justify corruption and oversight failures outlined in this report. The awarding of contractors favor GC strategies, securing almost $20 million without competition. The CBSA's disregard for basic management practices compromised accountability, competition, and value for money. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost, crime, or corruption. Will fleeced Canadian taxpayers get their money back? Here, here. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, uh, I agree with my colleague that a global pandemic and the rush to put in place a series of measures to protect the health and safety of Canadians does not, uh, does not exclude public servants from following the appropriate contracting rules that are in place. So, Mr. Speaker, we agree with the Auditor General when she says that those rules were not followed in a way that was acceptable. And, Mr. Speaker, as we've said, we're putting in place, and we already have put in place, a series of measures to ensure that this circumstance is never repeated again. Check them out. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Haute Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, today we found out about the Auditor General's disastrous report on ArriveCan. This confirms that there was a scandalous lack of oversight and transparency. In his mandate letter, the former president of the Treasury Board was supposed to, and I quote, raise the bar for government openness, efficiency, and transparency. The member for Quebec was responsible for auditing spending on these contracts. Contracts totaling millions of dollars. Will the former president of the Treasury Board apologize to Canadians for having failed in his duties? The 
Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement Canada. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to my colleague for reminding us of the importance of responsible government. A responsible government protects the health and safety of its people, especially in a crisis like COVID-19, which is the worst crisis in a century and the worst economic crisis since the 1930s. We had to act swiftly to save hundreds, thousands even, of lives. But despite that, we find that the Auditor General's conclusions and findings are unacceptable, and next time we will have to do better. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Haute-Saint-Charles. Mr. Speaker, I would like to remind the Minister that he was President of the Treasury Board of Canada. It was his responsibility to ensure that public funding was properly managed. Now, during the that period, during the pandemic, 23 companies received hundreds of millions of dollars in contracts, businesses which were not named. They were listed as companies A, B, C, D, and so on on the government website. I raised this issue in committee in 2021. Today, we've received confirmation that there was, I quote, blatantly disregarded basic management practices. Can the former president of the Treasury Board admit that he failed in his duty to protect Canadian taxpayers' money? The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. One of the duties of the Canadian government at the time was to ensure that the border with the United States would remain open for hundreds of thousands of Canadians transiting the border every day and billions of dollars in equipment, food, medications, that that would continue transiting through as well. That was why we created ArriveCan, so that the United States, led by President Trump, would not fully close the border because we needed all those things and people going through the border. And that was important in my writing and in the writing of my Conservative colleague. The Honourable Member for Lac saint jean Mr. Speaker, everyone can see that the Liberals have been irresponsible when it comes to immigration. But they can change. They can start mending face tenses today. They can support the Bloc Québécois motion to consult Quebec in order to review immigration targets based on intake capacity. They can also send a clear signal immediately with a single stroke of a pen, Mr. Speaker. They can write Quebecers a cheque for $470 million to pay for the intake of asylum seekers since 2021, Mr. Speaker. Will the government finally reimburse Quebecers? The Honourable Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm sure that the member across the way agrees with me that immigration is an indispensable resource for Canada, for Quebec and for our economy. What the member is proposing is a motion that Quebec wasn't even consulted on. And now the member is acting as spokesperson for other provinces. Even though we consult with those provinces annually, we have made responsible decisions and we will continue making responsible decisions with responsible governments. Well, the Liberals, they don't want to face reality when it comes to immigration. Quebec's immigration capacity has been exceeded. It has been exceeded in particular because of the federal government's inaction on asylum seekers. Since 2021, our public services and community organizations have been shouldering a completely disproportionate share of the responsibility for receiving asylum seekers. Quebec is doing too much, while all other provinces except Ontario are doing too little. Will the federal government finally call on the provinces that are not doing their fair share? The Honourable Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Minister. Well, there are two provinces doing more than their fair share, Ontario and Quebec. Quebec has done a lot of work to welcome asylum seekers, those who arrive at the Trudeau Airport and those who arrive at Roxham Road. But we have transferred $5.2 billion to Quebec since 2015. Half of that funding is from our government for temporary housing. We will do more and we can work together. Eagle Creek. Earlier today, we learned that the Prime Minister's Arrive Scam app was not worth the cost or the corruption. The Auditor General found a glaring disregard for mismanagement practices. The process was rigged from the beginning, which appears to be business as usual. After eight years of this NDP Liberal government, taxpayers are paying a high price for Liberal insiders, and Canadians want answers. Will the NDP Liberal coalition come clean with Canadians or continue the cover-up? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. 
again, Mr. Speaker, far from cover-up, this government has cooperated with parliamentary inquiries Absolutely. that are looking into this matter. Our government proactively Absolutely. sent internal audit reviews to a parliamentary committee, yep. and the Conservative chair decided not to share them with the members. Oh. So, Mr. Speaker, we have no lessons to take wow. on acting in a transparent manner. We have said from the beginning that any allegations of inappropriate contracting practices need to face the most severe consequences. That's exactly what this government will do. Check them out. The Honourable Member from Carleton Trail, Eagle Creek. Well, this from the Minister responsible for cl clam scam. Exactly. After eight years, it has never been clearer. This Prime Minister's Arrive Scan app is not worth the cost or the corruption. Rules were ignored, the government overpaid, and Canadians are kept in the dark. The system is so corrupt that only this Prime Minister could have thought it up. The rot starts at the top. This NDP Liberal government is trying to cover it up. Will this coalition allow the study of a rive scam to continue, or will they shut it down to keep their buddies safe? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, my colleague refers to the work of a parliamentary committee. As I said in the previous answer, our government has collaborated at all times with the parliamentary committee. Absolutely. Mr. Speaker, the president of the Border Services Agency, at my suggestion, sent a copy of the preliminary internal audit to the committee. The Conservative chair decided not to share it with the members because oh. it might somehow wow. prevent oh. them from asking a series of partisan questions to Bureau Democrats who were there awful. to appear before That's the committee. Awful. So, Mr. Right. Speaker, we have been transparent and will continue to be at all times. The Honourable Member for Lévis Le Pinière. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this government's incompetence, here's some more evidence that they're not worth the cost or the corruption. Get this, the Arrive Can app had a starting budget of 80000 and it ended up costing over $60 million. That's 700 times more expensive than anticipated. Mr. Speaker, what was there in between 80000 and $60 million? Well, bogus invoices paid out of the pockets of Canadian taxpayers. Can we find out who received all this money? This is a scandal of epic proportions. The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the scandal would have been if the Canadian government hadn't taken its responsibility of protecting the health and safety of Canadians, including in the riding of Lévis Lobinière, where hundreds of people's jobs depended on effective, efficient, rapid transit between Canada and the United States, a billion dollars in trade every day. But despite that, the Auditor General's recommendations this morning are cause for concern, and we will continue to work on them and address them over the upcoming weeks. The Honourable Member for Madawaska, Restigouche. Mr. Speaker, economic indicators in Canada seem to indicate that Canada is in an enviable position faced with the rest of the world, but some Canadians are still concerned about affordability and about the economy. Can the minister tell us about some recent economic successes and what they mean for our overall growth? The Honourable Innovation Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank my colleague for his excellent question. Yes, Canadians are concerned currently, but there are some important economic gains that will be significant and positive for Canadians. For instance, last month our economy created 37,000 jobs in Canada. Unemployment is going down, and women's participation in the labour force has hit record highs. We have also made generational historic investments in biomanufacturing, in natural resources, and in other industries. Canada is positioning, it, positioning itself as an economic leader of the 21st century. Yes, Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this NDP Liberal government, it's clear that this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. And what else isn't worth the cost? The Prime Minister's $60 million ad scam app. What started out as an $80,000 app is now at $60 million, and the Auditor General can't confirm that it won't go higher. Wow. Taxpayers do not get value for the Prime Minister's $60 million ad scan app, as the, as the Auditor General has stated. Will the Prime Minister come clean and tell us how much taxpayers are going to be truly fleeced for his Arrive Scam app? <laughs>
The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, once again, our government has, at the very first opportunity when these allegations were made, taken all of the appropriate steps to ensure that taxpayers' money is respected. The Border Services Agency President ordered an internal uh, investigation. Those uh, preliminary findings were shared with the committee, for which my honourable colleague is very familiar. It's too bad that the chair of that committee chose not to share, for example, that report with the members of the committee. Our government is being transparent and will always be to ensure that taxpayers' money is well spent. The Honourable Member from Edmonton West. Mr. Speaker, it was that minister's department that hid the RCMP investigation from the Auditor General. Mr. Speaker, it was also his party that had those documents on Wednesday, and what did they do with it? They filibustered and then voted to excuse the witness. So, it's very clear this government, every chance they get, will cover up the Arrive Cam, Arrive Cam scandal. So, quick question. What is the government trying to hide? When will it truly come clean on Arrive Scam? Here, here. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Whoops. Mr. Speaker, obviously the government is interested in the utmost transparency in this matter. Absolutely. That's why the President of the Border Services Agency and her officials appeared before the committee. That's why, Mr. Speaker, an internal investigation was ordered. My colleague referred to a referral to the RCMP. It may surprise him, but it's not politicians that direct the operational work of the, Canadian, or the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, so we can't speak to what exact investigations are being done. We have full confidence that they will hold those to account in the case that that's merited. The Honourable Member from Perth, Wellington. Mr. Speaker, for two years, parliamentary committees have been investigating the cosy relationship between government officials and highly paid insiders. Documents tabled at committees show that the two-person in a basement firm, GC Strategies, were hosting dinners and whiskey tastings for the same government officials who were given multi-million dollar contracts, all while government officials were getting mighty high bonuses. Can the chair of the mighty Government Operations Committee inform this House when the committee will next meet and when we will get answers for all Canadians. Yeah, yeah. The Honourable Chair of the Government Operations Committee. Mr. Speaker, this Wednesday at uh, Government Operations, it estimates uh, the Auditor General will be appearing on her Arrive Can audit. Given today's report, we will be re or, sorry, ordering the past and present Ministers of Public Safety, Procurement, Health and Treasury Boards, past and present to answer for Arrive Can mismanagement and waste. GC Strategies, who we now learned were paid $20 million, will be issued a summons ordering their appearance. The committee will call every witness and compel every document to hold the government to account on Arrive Can. Here, here. St. John's East. Mr. Speaker, like many people across this country, I have been deeply disturbed by attacks. Honourable Member from St. John's East, I'm going to ask members please to allow the chair to hear the questions and the answers from all members. The Honourable Member from St. John's East for the top, please. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, like many people across the country, I have been deeply disturbed by attacks from the Premiers of New Brunswick, Saskatchewan and now Alberta on vulnerable 2S LGTBQ plus students who are looking for privacy, dignity and a safe place to be who they are. Far too often for this group, home is not a safe place. To the Minister of Employment Workforce Development, what can our government and people that believe in inclusion do to fight this discrimination? The Honourable Minister for Mr. Economic Speaker, Development. Since Danielle Smith took to social media to threaten the privacy, the safety and the dignity of queer and trans students, I have spoken to countless individuals who have told me how terrified they are about the discriminatory actions taken by the provincial government. I have one message for every person in Alberta who believes in the inclusive and equitable province that we know it is to be. What they need to do, Mr. Speaker, is call the silent Conservative MPs in this room, call the MLAs in Alberta, so that we can kill this bill before it gets 
gets to the floor of the legislature. The Honourable Member from London, Fanshawe. These out-of-touch Liberals show time and again that they don't have the backs of brewery workers. Liberals are set to drastically increase the tax on beer in April. This will hurt breweries, small businesses, restaurants, and their unionized workers risk losing their jobs. Workers deserve better. Will the Minister listen and reverse her decision to increase costs on those who are already struggling to keep their doors open? Good question. Good question. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance. Um, I'm really glad to have a question about Canadian workers and Canadian jobs because it gives me a chance to share some good news that we got on Friday. The Canadian economy in January added 37,000 new jobs. That means we have 1.1 million more jobs than we had before COVID hit. Unemployment fell to 5.7%. And you know what? That is lower than it was at any time when Stephen Harper was Prime Minister. Wow. Wow. The Honourable Member from Kitchener Centre. Mr. Speaker, Hazim is a member of my community with family of members trapped in Gaza, including his brothers, sister, and mother. Like so many, he worries he won't be able to get them to safety. Because unlike Ukraine, this government has imposed an arbitrary cap of 1,000 people who can qualify for special immigration measures. Worse still, other countries like Iceland have been successful in getting family members out in 2024, while Canada has it. What is the minister doing to compel Israel to allow Canadian visa holders to leave Gaza? The Honourable Minister for Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is inaccurate that we, that we have been unable to extract people from Gaza in 2024. We have a unique program, unique in the world, to get family members of Canadians out from Gaza. It has have yet been unsuccessful because of uncooperation from local authorities at the Rafah gates. We urge them, we urge them to help us in getting those people across the border. That said, I have asked my department to review the humanitarian terms of the program to make sure they are complying with our obligations without compromising the security of Canadians. We will get people out, Mr. Speaker. And so brings us to the end of oral questions today. I see the honourable.